This is going to be the video you never knew you needed to watch before you go to Disneyland because if you're planning on running around a theme park all day, you're going to need some caffeine and I can't tell you how many times I've had people stop me in the park and ask me where I got my coffee. That's why today I'm going to tell you where to get coffee in Disneyland. So let's get started. There's many locations you can find coffee at in Disneyland and Disney California Adventure, but they aren't all the same and they have different operational hours and what they offer. So let's jump right into the first thing that I want to talk about, and that's where to find a good old fashioned hot cup of joe. Now all of these options will be Joffrey's coffee. The regular coffee will be around 16 ounces and cost you $3.79. Of course, things are subject to change, but that's where it sits right now. Most of these locations also offer mobile order, which I highly suggest using to skip those long food order lines. Starting off on Main Street in Disneyland, you have the Refreshment Corner. Refreshment Corner mostly offers hot dogs and pretzels, but most people don't realize it's a good place to just grab a quick cup of coffee as well once it's open. Right next to the Refreshment Corner is the Jolly Holiday. We're going to be talking about this location a lot. Not only is it a great place to pop on in to grab a quick cup of coffee, but you can also grab a fantastic little breakfast while you're there, or if you're not ready for a full-blown breakfast, you can just do a breakfast pastry, where you can find a table to sit down at and relax to enjoy your meal, or you can just grab it and go. If you're headed towards Tomorrowland to hit Space Mountain or any of their other rides, you can grab breakfast and coffee at the Galactic Grill. And after you've grabbed your coffee and your breakfast, you can sit down right by the Matterhorn and listen to its winds while you watch the beautiful colors of the Finding Nemo subs pass by. Not far from the Galactic Grill, you have the Alien Pizza Planet. And tucked over down by the side of Sleeping Beauty's castle, there's Maurice's Treats right by the Royal Theater. This is a great little hidden place to grab a coffee, a pastry, and it's a surprisingly calm and peaceful area in the morning. To so take a moment, sip a drink, and take it all in. If you're heading back to Fantasyland, you can stop by the Red Rose Tavern where not only are you going to find coffee, but you're going to find breakfast there, including a plant-based breakfast bowl. Of course, if the Red Rose Tavern isn't open yet, you can walk right across the walkway to the Fantasyland fruit stand to get your coffee. Back by the Fantasyland Theater, you have the Troubadour Tavern, which does offer coffee, but its hours of operation are always a little iffy, so I don't always count on it. If you're heading back to Toontown with the kiddos, you're most definitely going to need some coffee, and Cafe Daisy will have you covered there. This location is far less busy first thing in the morning, and it gets hoppin' and boppin' mid-afternoon. If you're planning on hitting that long Indiana Jones line, you may want to grab your caffeine first. You can do so at the Bengal Barbecue, which is just right next to it. By Pirates of the Caribbean, you're going to find the Royal Veranda. Not only are you going to find coffee there, but they now offer a breakfast Monte Cristo waffle, which I love the sounds of, but I haven't tried it yet. Please let me know if you've tried it and if you liked it. Over in Frontierland, you'll find the most options for finding coffee, although not all of them are offered first thing in the morning. The Ship to Shore Market will be open first thing in the morning with its breakfast chimichanga, or even a corn on the cob if that's what you would like, along with numerous other cold beverages. Come lunchtime, you'll have more options at the Golden Horseshoe, as well as the Stage Door Cafe. Across the way from those locations is Rancho de Zocalo, which offers Mexican food and good space for large group dining. 
Back in New Orleans Square, you have the mint julep bar. If you're getting coffee from here, you're most definitely going to want a mobile order because not only does it have coffee, it has Disneyland's very popular Mickey beignets. A fabulous little treat to enjoy with your cup of coffee. Along the rivers of America, and tucked away, kind of hidden, is the Harbor Galley. A lot of people just walk right past this location that offers lobster rolls and soup and bread bowls. Back in Critter Country, and starting around lunchtime, you have the Hungry Bear. If you find yourself on the planet of Batu first thing in the morning, you can always head over to Ronto Roasters for a coffee and a Ronto wrap. I personally prefer the Ronto Less wrap over the Ronto wrap because it just has more flavor and a lot more going on with it. So here's your rundown of all the basic coffee option locations in Disneyland Park. Feel free to take a screenshot of it for a quick reference later on while you're there. Now let's move over to Disney California Adventure and see where you can find a basic cup of coffee there, starting at the Smoke Jumpers Grill, where you'll also be able to grab some breakfast while you're at it. Smoke Jumpers is very close to the entrance of the park, so it's a nice place to get a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. Back the other way into Hollywoodland, you'll have Award Wieners. Now it won't be open until about lunchtime because they mostly just do hot dogs. And if you do choose to get coffee from here, I most definitely suggest doing mobile order because the lines line up fast here. Across from Award Wieners, you'll have Schmoozies, which mostly offers milkshakes and smoothies. We'll talk about this location a little bit more later on. In Avengers Campus, you basically have one dining location, and that's Pim Test Kitchen. You will find coffee there, but you will also be able to find breakfast. I'm not going to lie, the breakfast there is not totally my favorite. It's super cute, but I don't love it there. There's a little hidden coffee location back in Cars Land. Found at the Cozy Cone Motel number one, the one with the churros. You can use mobile order for a quick grab-and-go coffee there. Also in Cars Land, you have Flo's V8 Cafe. It only offers lunch and dinner these days, but it does have coffee, and it has some of the best places to sit and take in the area. Tucked between San Francisco and Cars Land, you have the Ghirardelli Chocolate Shop. The coffee there is a bit more expensive, but it's also because it's a bit more fancy. We'll talk about that a little bit later, too. Across the San Francisco Bridge, you'll find the Cappuccino Cart. This is a very popular place not only to get coffee, but to get little sweet treats as well, so I highly recommend getting mobile order for this. A surprising and hidden place to get coffee in Paradise Gardens is the Corn Dog Castle, which opens usually around 9.30 in the morning, so it's a great place to sneak in and grab a quick drink before people start ordering their corn dogs for the day. Also, in the Paradise Gardens area, you can get coffee at the Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta when that opens for lunchtime. No need to mobile order here, you can just run in, grab your drink, and run out. It's really not that busy there usually. And the Paradise Garden Grill will be open with seasonal offers that rotate throughout the year, but usually always has some kind of coffee option. You can take these orders and enjoy them in the dining and entertainment area of Paradise Gardens. Now, here's your rundown for Disney California Adventure Park for your basic cup of joe. Now, of course, depending on the time of year you're visiting the parks, it can get quite hot, and that's when it can be very tempting to get an iced coffee or a cold brew. The locations for that in Disneyland are the Jolly Holiday, of course, You'll find iced caramel macchiatos, iced mochas, their chimney sweep cold brew that has hints of hickory in it, and if you're not really feeling coffee, you can also grab a specialty tea. Over in New Orleans Square, you have Tiana's Palace, which not only has some really tasty food, it has lemon-flavored beignets, hot sauce aplenty, and iced coffees for all. Always keep an eye out on the Hungry Bear. They oftentimes have seasonal 
iced coffees and teas. At Rancho de Zocalo in Frontierland, you have my favorite, the horchata cold brew. At the Red Rose Tavern, there's the lovely gray stuff, but there's also the tavern cold brew and a refreshing lemonade. Now the Troubadour Tavern will probably be changing what it has pretty soon as the Pixar Fest comes into the Fantasyland Theater in the end of April, but for now it does offer a cold brew and a fruit punch. For cold brew, iced tea, and fruit punch options in Galaxy's Edge, you have Docking Bay 7. This location is known for its unique flavor pairings in both food and drink, including the cold brew Black Calf. I don't know what I think about this drink. I think the idea of soggy cocoa puffs floating in my drink kind of always bothers me, so I never get it. You'll also find an iced tea and a fruit punch there as well. Cafe Daisy has tons of fun iced drinks, both coffee and non-coffee, which is awesome because it can get toasty over there in Toontown. The Galactic Grill will always have a basic cold brew iced coffee there, but they oftentimes have really tasty seasonal cold brews, iced teas and drinks, so always check them out. All right, here's your rundown for cold brews in Disneyland Park. Over in DCA, the Smoke Jumpers Grill will have cold brews for you. One of them is even spiked. Back down at Schmoozie's, you'll have your basic cold brew, plus coffee-flavored milkshake, and the option of adding liqueur to your cold brew. Pim Test Kitchen will give you a tasty cold brew option as well as a fun fruit punch option for the kiddos. Over in San Francisco Square at the Lucky Fortune Cookery, you'll oftentimes find fun seasonal iced teas and coffees as well as that adorable Baymax macaron. And if you swing by Aunt Cass Cafe, you can pick up a specialty caramel cream cold brew, a honey lemonade, or an adorable Baymax sourdough bread loaf. Back at the cappuccino cart, you'll have a Vietnamese iced coffee, as well as other seasonal offerings. Okay friends, here's your list for cold brews in DCA. Of course, some of us like our fancier coffees, and those who really have to have their Starbucks have options too. There are three Starbucks locations in the Disneyland Resort. The first one is on Main Street in Disneyland proper and can be found at the Market House. These locations are very popular and don't have mobile orders, so plan on standing in a pretty long line here. The other option for fancy coffees in Disneyland proper is going to be the Jolly Holiday once again with the option of espressos, cappuccinos, lattes, all of that kind of fun stuff. Now, if you need a cup of coffee before you even go into the parks, there is a Starbucks in downtown Disney. For the fancy coffee options in DCA, you have the Starbucks found in the Fiddler, Pfeiffer, and Practical Cafe connected to Claire Bell's ice cream. Just like the other Starbucks locations, it does not offer mobile order and can get quite crowded with long lines, but the good thing about this location is it has a ton of seating. And once again, back at the Ghirardelli Chocolate Shop, not only are you going to find a whole bunch of options for tasty little chocolates, but you will find a whole bunch of options. Coffee drinks, both iced, whipped, in milkshakes, hot, you name it, they've got it, and it's got Ghirardelli chocolate in it. And of course, the cappuccino cart's gonna have your handful of fancier coffee options as well. Not to mention the possibility of adding liqueur to your coffee. 
Okay, who feels like they need to go get a coffee now? Give me all the love in the various YouTube ways you can. If you liked this video today, share it with others. Thanks for watching and take care.